My favorite thing about being in a long-running Minecraft world is feeling like I've created this world unique to itself. But the moment that you take a step outside of that build, you find yourself, unfortunately and abruptly, back in regular Minecraft. The boundaries of the carefully crafted lore of your world has limits, and often I find that traveling out of or between builds breaks my immersion and I no longer feel as though the world I imagined exists outside of the immediate boundaries of my build. This is why I like to extend the boundaries of my world by simply building, and I do mean simply, details that can be stumbled on while roaming around. For the builder, it makes you feel as though your world almost extends into the vanilla setting, and for players who might be traveling near your builds, it gives them a sense of adventure when they find one of your hidden builds, and it makes them wonder how many more could there be, and allows a bit of a suspension of disbelief. These builds can be anything. A natural structure, some spruced up terrain, a forgotten shrine, a wagon on the road, ruins, docks, you name it. You can put them on the side of the road, in the center of geographic feature, or hidden away. The nice thing about these builds is that there isn't really a specific way to build them, and a lot of them can be done very quickly, although as a general rule of thumb I like to spruce them up with vegetation, bone meal, and mixed material grounds or paths. Wild wheat or speckled coarse dirt adds a fresh but organic feeling to your environment, while leaves and vines make it feel as though nature has taken it over. For this specific world, I included eight little builds around my castle, roughly one in each direction, to expand my world as much as I could. I also tried to make some of them slightly hidden, but also give a unique view of the castle from them so that anyone who can come across the little builds before the castle gets a taste of the treat before them while others are out in the open and invite you from the distance to come and explore what might be hidden there. Many of the builds have chests which can be filled with items to supplement a story that you've created in that spot. Each one of them has their own story and it's up to the player to make sense of them. Little items like this can facilitate the imagination. Use the biomes around you to your advantage. I had a little list when I started this of things I wanted to place in the world, but I ended up scrapping like half of it and coming up with new ones when I looked around at what was nearby. A couple of them came to me simply because I saw a cool geographical feature and wanted to make use of it and double its interest. If I were to cross over into a new biome, I would do something that made sense for that change. With that said, I also removed any ugly terrain in the immediate vicinity of my builds, any floating islands of dirt or wonky terrain, spiky hills of, of anything got removed, trees got cleared out for better line of sight from the build. Something that I encourage you to do with your builds is to fade them into the world. The concept is the same as what we're doing with our world as a whole, right? We are slowly diffusing our builds outward until they fade into vanilla Minecraft. Do that with the vegetation around these little builds so that there isn't a harsh boundary between what you build and what's around it by sprinkling bone meal around it and thinning out the grass as it moves away from your build. When you're making these builds, there's really no need to be spending too much time on them. A nicer build here and there can certainly compound the effect that you're trying to achieve here, but the really nice thing is that this is going to magnify the size of your personal world drastically with very little time or resources invested compared to how much time you spend on your main builds and projects. Many of these builds took me only a few minutes in creative while others like the waterfall might take a little bit longer. Over time I let these details seep into the world building. Ideas might compound off of them, be used in another location to tie things together. If you build a cart on the side of a road, maybe there's another location further down the road where it came from, or a little market where it's going to. Perhaps my little hunting camp has a small homemade archery range a little further deeper into the woods, or the river with the waterfall has a water wheel. I can also simply let them sit, and in the future come back to them, and add even more little builds off in the distance and continue expanding my region. I always mention in videos that I like to make the world feel lived in, and this really helps that a lot by placing remnants of man-made structures around. In Minecraft, we're pretty limited in ways that we can portray world building, so it typically needs to be communicated through builds. The wild is already in place in Minecraft, so it's kind of our job to fill the wild with life. 
and old stone structures that can withstand the test of time are a pretty easy way to do that. As a final thought, this concept can be used inside your bigger builds too, to add variety to different corners of your villages and cities if you feel like there isn't enough sense of adventure within it. I hope you got some new information or at least inspiration for your world. Subscribe if you aren't already for more in-depth how-to build guides, and I'll see you in the next one.